Okay, in this video we're going to factorize uh, the expressions change division to multiplication by the reciprocal if needed and then cross cancel common factors. So we'll start with this example 1 and we'll do this example 2 then example 3 and you should be having lots of fun with these because we should know all of the skills needed so far but on example 4 there might be one little thing that that you might want to look at is factorizing you know 5 minus 10 X and what you do at 1 minus 2 X you might not have seen that before and it most importantly example 5 how do you factorize 1 minus X squared and how would we simplify this fraction here just on its own okay so again please use the index on the left of the screen to select which examples you need and obviously please take notes on all the examples if necessary or at least uh, three out of the five would be good as usual so you're required to take notes on um, half at least half the video right so any case we'll start with example one and hopefully we'll have great fun with this because we know all the skills already so if I was dividing these fractions uh, the first step is well I'm going to you know factorize all the expressions and then I could change division to multiplication by the reciprocal if needed well I guess we could do you know we, we, we could we could we could actually do this step first I guess I should have written it that way but but either way it would work but you know I it, to be honest I would actually you know yeah I, I would um, change that to multiplication first and so here I would have x on the top and then I'd have x squared minus x on the bottom okay and then this one of course is the same thing x squared minus 2x plus 1 on the top and x minus 1 on the bottom now we have gone over factoring these expressions already so hopefully you're you know excited and ready to go and you're well able to do these now okay so this expression x squared minus 2x plus 1 it has an x squared term an x term and a number and we know what to factorize that and if you take out your notes um, or in your review uh, notes on this you should see that this is the short method okay so you're asking so you have an x in each corner uh, simply and you're you're asking well I guess I'll write in here what two numbers multiply to positive 1 and add to negative two. So, so this one, sorry, I'll do it in here. It's a short method, okay? So the x's are in the corner, and you're saying what two numbers multiply to positive one and add to negative two? Okay, and once again, factors of one is simply one times one, and if I had a negative one and a negative one, negative one, negative one, multiply to positive one, and negative 1 and negative 1 add to give negative 2. So this factorizes to be that. And we have, of course, x minus 1 on the bottom. Now with this x minus 1 on the bottom, you can put parentheses around that. Okay, just to show that it is a factor just like these guys. And now it can be cross-canceled. Okay. And then so I'm multiplying by x over. And the x squared minus x what type of factoring is needed for this? We have an x squared term and an x term. Isn't that pull out the common factor method? So what's a common factor of x squared and x? The greatest common factor is in fact just x, isn't it? So I can pull x out. I guess I'll do it here. Pull x out and x times what gives x squared? x times x gives x squared and x times what gives negative x x times see this is negative 1x it's x times negative 1 isn't it x times x gives x squared x times negative 1 gives negative x okay so that's why we went over this so this is x minus 1 and now can't we cross cancel common factors we can indeed um, this whole x minus 1 cross cancels with this and they leave ones and this x minus 1 cross cancels with this one, or vice versa. And what else? Can, can we cross cancel something else? Well, we, we're also multiplying by these x numbers, aren't we? So these guys can also be cross cancelled. Okay? So we know from our practice with multiplying fractions that we're allowed to do this. Because when we had, you know, um, 7 eighths times, um, 
uh, say 21 over 35 or whatever we could simply cross cancel 7 and 35 we could cross cancel um, 8 and oh this was this was a 24 wasn't it 8 and 24 into 3 and we got 3 fifths okay so this is exactly the same exact type of thing we're just cross cancelling the factors before we um, multiply the tops and the bottoms so we cross cancel now if I multiply the tops and the bottoms I actually have I actually have 1 times 1 times 1 on the top here over 1 times 1 times 1 on the bottom so I have simply 1 over 1 which of course is 1 so my answer is the number 1 for this example okay so this whole thing simply equals 1 amazingly now we'll go to go to example 2 now x squared minus 8x plus 16 over x squared plus 4x divided by this um, I advise you when you see in your homework you see division without writing all of this down just to save you time just straight away write down multiply and flip this make your very the very first thing you write in your paper should be x over x squared minus 16 it'll just save you time so you don't have to write the whole thing out twice just you know this is what you see in the textbook and then the first thing you write down is this line so we've got x squared minus 8x plus 16 all over x squared plus 4x and now we can factorize each expression and um, cross cancel common factors right so like the top one is x squared minus 8x plus 16 what type is that You've got an x squared term, an x term, and a number. Isn't that the short method? So you should have an x in each corner. And you say what two numbers multiply to give 16 and add to give negative 8. So you could list the pairs of factors of 16. It would be 1 times 16, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. What two numbers multiply to give positive 16 and add to give negative 8? How about, well, 4 and 4 adds to 8, so could you use those two numbers? You could use, say, negative 4 and negative 4, right? They multiply to give a positive 16. They add together to give a negative 8. So, with the short method, I have x minus 4 times x minus 4. On the bottom here, I have x squared plus 4x. That's an x squared term and an x term. What's the f method for factorizing this type of expression? Is it short method, pull out common factor, or difference of squares, or long method? Well, it's pull out a greatest common factor again, isn't it? So, what can I? What's a common factor to x squared and 4x? Isn't it just x? You can pull x out. X times what gives x squared? X times x, right? X times what gives 4x? X times 4. So this one becomes simply x times x plus 4, right? And then it's multiplied by, on the top here, x can't be factorized. It's, it's, as, it's as factorized as it can be. It's just x, so we leave that alone. Now, x squared minus 16, is that a short method? Pull out greatest common factor or difference of squares? Or long method? Isn't it a difference of squares because we have an x squared term, subtraction, and this is actually a perfect square. This is actually 4 squared. So we should just get used to seeing these guys because this one can be factorized as follows. Rewrite it x squared plus 0x minus 16, and now use the short method. 16 is 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. What two numbers multiply to negative 16 and add to 0? So how can I put in a plus sign or a minus sign on these numbers so I end up with, so I can calculate zero by adding them? So I could have a positive four and a negative four, right? They would add to zero and they would multiply to negative 16. So this one factors to be x minus four times x plus four. And now we can cross cancel common factors. Now x minus 4 cross cancels with that or with that whichever but just one of them does anything else cross cancel what about the x's do they cross cancel yep they're factors see you can put parentheses around them if you like just to show that they're also factors 
and it can cross cancel your x's. How about oh I've an idea. What about these two x plus fours? Can we cross cancel those? No, why not? We cannot cross cancel these guys. Why not? Well they're both on the bottom, right? I mean if you were doing this, if you were multiplying say one third times one third one third times one third is one over three times three, one over nine. Now if I cross cancel these threes, I get one over one. A third times a third is not one, it's one ninth, isn't it? So we cannot cross cancel two things if they're both on the bottom. So anyway, we can cross cancel these guys, they're both on the bottom. So what we get of course is on the top we have x minus four times one times one. So on the um on the top of the fraction here we have the factor x minus 4. On the bottom I have 1 times x plus 4 times 1 times x plus 4. So that is of course x plus 4 times x plus 4. Now to write this with less ink you could do it this way. Um, the x plus 4 times x plus 4 may be written x plus 4 all squared. Do you remember that? And so you could write your answer like that. Okay. I guess my fraction bar is a bit too wide, long there. Okay. So on to example um, three. So here's example three: x minus five over x squared minus six x plus five multiplied by this guy. I want you to press pause and do this all by yourself. So please press pause and do it yourself, and then check your answer. Okay, so here's what I got when I factorized every expression I could. I can only factorize these two bottom ones, and I got x minus 5 times x minus 1, and x times x, this one as well. Okay, anyway, so one thing you should always remember is put parentheses around this x minus 5. Put parentheses around this x minus 1 to make sure that they're contained, because they're like it's like they're their own uh, separate factor, okay? And when you do that, you'll see that, oh, it's obvious these should be cross-canceled. That into that goes once here and here. This into this goes once here and here. Don't forget to put your ones up here because the answer is one times one, which is one over one times one times x times x plus one. So one over x times x plus one. And if you wrote down your answer was x times x plus one, you would be completely and absolutely wrong because the answer is one over x times x plus one. Okay? Not the same thing. Now example now example four, watch out, you might be a little bit tripped up by something like this. We've got a one minus two x here, we've got a five minus ten x here, we have an x squared minus one. Okay, so how do we factorize these guys and so forth? Well, first of all, deal with your division. So the very first line you should write down your homework is is multiplied by the reciprocal. This is x squared minus one, and here we have one minus two x. Okay, now factorize each um, expression and then cross cancel common factors. So if I start with the 5 minus 10x, what type of method can I use to factorize this expression? Pull out a common factor? Short method, long method, difference of squares? How about pull out a common factor, right? What goes into 5 and 10x? What's the common factor of both terms? Well, 5 goes into both, doesn't it? 5 multiplied by what will give me 5? Five? 5 multiplied by 1, isn't it? 5 multiplied by what will give me negative 10x? Well, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, isn't it? So 5 times negative 2x, right? See, 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times negative 2x is negative 10x. So this is correct. So this top one factorizes indeed to be 5 times 1 minus 2x over x plus 1 multiplied by and this guy is x squared minus 1. That's a funny one. Do we need the short method, the long method, pull out a common factor, difference of squares? Well, you might see it's one of those ones where you've got an x squared term and a number, right? So you can write that 
as it's a difference of squares, isn't it? Because 1 squared is 1. But in any case, if you write this as x squared plus 0x minus 1, now you can use the short method to factorize. So what two numbers, so the factors of 1 are, you know, one, 1 times 1 gives 1, and now you have to find two numbers that multiply to negative 1 and add to 0. So how about a positive 1 and a negative 1? Multiply them, you get negative 1. Add them together, you get 0, right? So this fact this factorize is actually to be x plus 1 times x minus 1 and go ahead and multiply that just to check it because we're going to need to know this for also for example 5 which is coming up which is you know difficult you haven't seen this one before so we have to know this skill for example 5 also so multiply this out just to check it for yourself x times x x squared x times negative 1 minus 1x one, 1 times x plus 1x 1 times negative 1, minus 1. Add like terms. We have x squared. Now these guys, negative 1x plus 1x, that's 0x, isn't it? x squared plus 0x, you can write minus 1. And 0x, of course, is 0. So this becomes x squared minus 1. So it's very interesting that x squared minus 1 is actually the same thing as x plus 1 times x minus 1. You know, it, it's unusual, isn't it? It is, so it's just something we've got to get used to. So just remember, you never understand math, you just get used to it, right? So we have everything factorized, now we need to cross-cancel common factors. And always remember, put parentheses around these guys. These are their own personal factors, so you can put parentheses around them, and it makes it easier to see that you can cross-cancel them then, right? So we can go x plus 1 cross cancels with x plus 1. 1 minus 2x is the same thing as this 1 minus 2x, isn't it? And so what I have is on the top 5 times 1 times 1 times x uh, minus 1. So I have 5 times x minus 1 all over 1 times 1 all over 1. And what does that give me? Just to remind yourself, the number 3, oh, if you had 3 over 1, that that's just the same thing as... 3. So anything over 1 is the same thing as itself, as the top. So this, of course, is simply just 5 times x minus 1. Okay? So you write your answer like so. Okay, on to the dreaded example 5. Factorizing 1 minus x squared is interesting, and I'll give you the trick. The trick is... It's actually the opposite, if you'll notice, of x squared minus 1. And remember when we were um, pulling out a factor of negative 1? That, that kind of helped with everything. Because, you see, this is a negative x squared, positive x squared, positive 1, negative 1. So it's actually the opposite of x squared minus 1. So if you actually pull out a negative 1 from both terms, it helps you to factorize, uh, you know, this thing better. So you say basically negative 1 times what will give me positive 1? Negative 1 times negative 1, right? Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And negative 1 times what gives me negative x squared? Negative 1 times how about plus x squared, okay? And now the trick is to see that you see negative 1 plus x squared is the same thing as a positive x squared uh, minus 1. Okay, So this thing is actually negative 1 times x squared minus 1. And what's x squared minus 1 equal to, by the way? We've just factorized that in the last example. So if we just switch to example 4, you'll see how we factorize this. If you factorize that, you get x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. So, in fact, we have um, so this negative 1 times x squared minus 1 is in fact negative 1 times 
and the x squared minus 1 is simply x plus 1 times x minus 1, okay? So this whole 1 minus x squared becomes this amazing thing, negative 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 1, and that's going to help us with cross-canceling common factors, okay? So it's unusual, but it, but it is true, okay? So um, when we turn to this example, then x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 1 minus x squared, x squared plus 2x plus 1 shouldn't cause us too many problems. We should be able to factorize that. It's the short method, isn't it? And what two numbers multiply to positive 1 and add to positive 2? So a list of pairs of factors. 1 times 1. Find two numbers that multiply to positive 1 and add to positive 2. How about a positive 1 and a positive 1, right? And then we saw the 1 minus x squared is simply negative 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 1, isn't it? We factorize this to be this. And now we can cross-cancel common factors. Listen to this goes once here and here. And that's all I have. Because x plus 1 is not the same thing as x minus 1. So this whole uh, fraction becomes, on the top we have 1 times x plus 1. And on the bottom, we have all over uh, negative 1 times x minus 1, okay? Which, of course, you know, it's, it's um, x plus 1 all over you know, just it's just basically a negative on the bottom. It's negative, you know, x minus 1. Now, with any fraction, like if you take the fraction... Um, uh, negative one half is the same thing as one over negative two, right? Because they're both negative zero point five. I mean, one divided by two is zero point five, and negative over positive is negative. Um, similarly, uh, positive over negative is a negative number, and one over two is zero point five. So it's the same thing, and of course that's the same thing as negative one half with the negative in line with the fraction bar, which of course is negative. And 1 over 2, again, is 0 0.5. So each of these is negative 0 0.5, if you like. So it, it, I'm just trying to show you that your negative can be on the top, on the bottom, or in line with the fraction bar when you're dealing with fractions. Okay. So in this case, we actually have a negative on the bottom. Now the standard procedure is to put that negative in line with the fraction bar. Okay. And if we do that, then we can write negative, and then it's x plus 1 over um, x minus 1. So this is the standard way to write it, to have the negative actually in line with the fraction bar. Okay.